we talk about protein as if it's just one thing, yeah. that it's a generic macronutrient. There's proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. But dietary protein is made up of 20 different amino acids, nine of which are essential. Uh, the nine essentials must be eaten. The body cannot make them. And they all have diverse biological roles. And they're not interchangeable. To your point about plant and animal protein, you could look at the back of a label and a, hump, a hemp burger or something could say it has 10 grams of dietary protein, but the leucine content is different. The methionine content is different. Um, the tryptophan content, all of these, it's not going to be the same ratio. And to put it simply, the next phase of nutrition research is going to recognize these limiting amino acids. And the main ones are methionine, leucine, and lysine, and limiting to various degrees. That is going to be the next focal point. When you think about these individual amino acids, each of these individual amino acids are nutrients. But when you look at the back of a food label, it only lists 14, right? 14, 14 vitamins and minerals. What about uh, threonine, which is important for mucin production. Threonine, 75% of threonine will be utilized to make mucin production, which is responsible for the uh, health of the, the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. Um, methionine, a lot of the vegan vegetarian diets are methionine deficient, mostly uh, vegetarian or vegan diets. And that's important for one carbon metabolism. That's important. It's a precursor for cysteine and subsequent glutathione production which is the master antioxidant. And what about taurine? There's some great papers that have just come out about taurine and aging. Taurine is also important for the eyes. Um, uh, lysine for carnitine synthesis, fatty acid oxidation. The list goes on and on and on. What we can count, count on is when we hit the needs of skeletal muscle, the protein needs for skeletal muscle, then everything else falls into place. That would be 0.7 to 1 gram per pound ideal body weight. The current recommendation is 0.37 grams per pound. I'm 115 pounds. For me, that would be 45 grams of protein. The, that is the minimum to prevent deficiencies. That has not changed since 1968. And again, based on nitrogen balance studies, to my knowledge, there are no uh, health outcomes for nitrogen balance, which by the way, nitrogen balance was adopted from agriculture to how do we raise cattle with the uh, lowest amount of protein needed and the highest amount of carbohydrates to do it cheaply and to not stunt growth. As we age, why do we need more protein? Because we do have to counterbalance whether it's anabolic resistance. Again, skeletal muscle is a nutrient sensing organ. It essentially senses the quality of the diet particularly sensitive to amino acids. Of those amino acids, it's exquisitely sensitive to leucine. That efficiency can go down. I say can because I actually am in line with you in terms of we don't have a ton of data on highly exercised older adults. You still see data that talks about people being healthy and sedentary in the same sentence in the literature. There's no such thing as a healthy sedentary person. 